All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the stand-up meeting for FPGA for Open Research Institute for the 2nd of August, 2022. Uh, so what we do here is to uh, talk about what we've done over the past week, what we're going to be doing over the next week, uh, if we need any resources, if we have any roadblocks. Um, so let's get started. Uh, Anshul, go ahead. Big win, finally here. Yeah. The read is, taught, read is sorted. So what was happening uh, when we are trying to read from uh, register zero, the memory address of encoder. Um, so the instruction was coming properly till interconnect and then from interconnect down to the encoder. Uh, the address that we were using, suppose it was 44AB8000, it was taking the lower 12 bits as an offset uh, rather than taking this complete as an address and offset zero. So it was trying to read some uh, non-existing location and that was giving us a bus error. So once I moved things around, now the encoder is at 44AB0000. So if, if I pass on the address, if I pass on 44AB0000, it takes the offset as lower four bit for lower 16 bits which are all zeros and it reads the register properly so that's sorted uh, now jesd has moved to another location 44ab8000 so that's the jesd location uh, and uh, now all the peak pokes to all the addresses and the registers for all the components connected to axilite and other buses is working properly now the next step is dma uh, so uh, I remember you had one sample DMA application. I will try to work on that so that we get one packet across to the radio, out through the radio. Yeah, yeah I had a um, some source code that was uh, called DMA test, and that's just a mm. sort, uh, just a start. So all mm. it had was the register reads and writes. Yes. Um, so I had started to look at like, what do you need to, to read and write, or what do you need to write to what registers to do DMA, but it's not completed yet. Yes. So I think it yes. looks like that's the next step. So I'm very excited. Yeah. This is good news. Thank you so much. Yeah. I know it was a lot of hard work. <laughs> yeah, it was basically to get that ILA work, ILA to get working and to understand and uh, to learn how it works. So yeah, uh, once that was done, it was pretty quick and pretty good, yeah. So Good. Um, is there is there anything that's stopping the the way that we set up the repo from from working? Like, is there anything that needs to change in the repository? Um, I think so. Now, the, uh, yeah, the address map, the address has changed. So I think I need to update the tackle script. Okay. Uh, with, or I don't. I'm not sure where the addresses are saved. Uh, so whatever it is, I will see the diff and then. Yeah, they're uh, in the Tekel script that's under uh, ADRV 9371 okay. and then uh, hmm. I think common. Mm -hmm. So so that has the address in it and that seems that to be has where it gets map. it. Okay, Okay. Mm -hmm. so yeah, the, so it's a new address. Anything yeah. else in that script? Uh, uh, just a new address. And yeah, I added some debug course, uh, which will be helpful in debugging. Okay. So I would let them uh, remain there, so there will be some scripts or something related to that in tackle script. So, so it's an extra instance, code. right? Like you, so you call Highlight the instance or... uh, and then okay, yeah, because I've seen that yep. done elsewhere. Okay, cool. That sounds like yep. we can we can do that. Yeah. Thank you. That's a that's a lot of good news. Yeah, that's good. And now uh, the next thing is, how can I get? Uh, do you have any idea how can I get sample uh, to? DMA out to the radio board by a JEST link and then out. Uh, where can, how can I get that sample? Yeah, it's a good question. Anybody got a comment? Because I think what you're talking about is like a baseband, baseband frames. Yes. Yeah. Baseband okay. Frames. We we believe that the that the we have a number of files um, mm -hmm. that we've been using for the beacon demos, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. think that those might work. Um, okay. And if they don't work for any reason, because uh, they should just be a, a file full of baseband frames, um, then we can go back to to several uh, people in the in the community, and they should be able mm. to help us. So, um, yeah, the that's transport right. stream files, like from Ron Economos, they should be baseband frames, and that's how we've right. been using them, and they've worked 
pretty well for the, the beacon work. Right. And even Everest tested successfully with Pluto, so he should have some mm -hmm. file. And even Suato also tested with Pluto, so they, he should also have some file. Got you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That should work. Yep. And if it doesn't, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You bet. Cool. Okay. Uh, hey, Paul, do you have any comments? Well, I have a question for Anshul. Um, now that we know how to add L ILA instances and use them, uh, is there some particular tutorial that we need to follow or is, do we need to write down a few pages of, of notes on how to do that so that other people can follow along? Uh, I can write it down, uh, but the, the, the guidance that I followed is basic, basic, basically the docs from AMD. They explain it steps, uh, step by step. So that's the only official documentation that's available. Can you link it in? Yep, of course. Yeah, that I think that should be sufficient. As long as it worked for you to yep. to make this happen, then linking the the correct documentation. I've tried to look up ILA before, mm -hmm. so I'd, it'd be nice to know if I'm looking at the right stuff. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because that's going to be a valuable tool throughout. Oh yes, work. yes, it's it's really useful. Yeah, I think the the scheduler you know what what organizes the the baseband frames i think that's going to be in firmware or so, more on the mm. software side um mm. and that's that's something that's that's coming right up uh, as mm -hmm. soon as we can can manipulate this over the air um the next i think hardware part is the the uplink receiver so mm. and and that's definitely going to need some ila because we already know that the code uh from Theseus cores has some some to do's they their code is great, and we've demonstrated it before by itself mm -hmm. uh, using um, a, a USRP and, and RF knock in GNU radio. Uh, but we do know that the code base has some limitations, and they want those limitations to be resolved. And so ILA is going to be pretty key for that, too. So anything that we can use, um, any tool that, that we can have to, to make that process a little easier, it'll be good. So thank you. This is a big deal. All right. Uh, all right. Any other reports? I have a null report from the ORI Remote Lab West. Nothing, nothing new there. <laughs> I don't know. That's uh, that's good news. So everything's working okay. I haven't had any major upsets or. Well, I know that we had a reboot, but that was uh, that was pretty ordinary. It went well. Yeah, that was just more or less a scheduled reboot or without the scheduled part. Um, yeah, and so far yeah, we the haven't only- We have been using, much, using it a whole lot recently, so no, nothing new has been broken or discovered broken. Well, it, I've been using it quite a bit trying to get the ADI build to make. Um, so so I'll, give, I'll give my report. Uh, so I've been using remote labs, but only in the sense of the VM on the- on Chonk, and what I've been trying to do is to to make our encoder and the um, the hardware uh, reference design from ADI to pull both of those in as submodules, um, and so that we can pick the exact right commit level from these two different repositories. Uh, so using them as submodules is pretty pretty neat, and I set that up, but the make has not worked ever since. And so I've reached out to Engineer Zone from ADI to ask for help. And I'm pretty sure that this could be solved. Um, it seems to be hung up on a particular clock uh, signal called, uh, or a, a signal called REF underscore CLK, so reference clock. We don't use it in our uh, code that we're bringing into the reference design. And when you make the reference design by itself, the reference design makes fine. Um, so I, I'm not really sure what to do here, but I reached out and asked for help. And if we can solve that problem, then I think that the with the changes to the address map, then we should have a repository where all you need to do in order to use our code is to type make at the command line. So that would be that'd be nice to to see happen. Uh, so I've been using the remote lab, but not the uh, nothing over the air <laughs> yet. Uh, that's going to change, I think, uh, very very soon. Uh, another thing that I've been doing is is looking at some MATLAB code that demodulates um, FSK. 
So it's a MATLAB model that uses DFTs to, to demodulate FSK. And this will be on the uplink receiver. And what I'd like to do is take the MATLAB code and prepare it for um, HDL coder in MATLAB that will produce the HDL code. And then we can try it out on the ZC706. So that's kind of the goal there. It's moving forward, gotten a good, good start there. Um, that combines up with the work from Theseus cores that I, I talked about a few minutes ago. Um, so that's coming. The The really big win is that the encoder is behaving a little better in the downlink section. I don't have any roadblocks except the usual. You know, uh, I think we, we all are dealing with a pretty steep learning curve and uh, this is ambitious work. Um, I, I think uh, stepping back just a little bit, that we have a, an excellent opportunity to put this into a proposal for a high elliptical orbit project that we're going to present uh, to JAMSAT uh, as soon as we're done. And anything working or any prototypes that we can show make that proposal better. So uh, that's, uh, that's some good news from, from the wider community. All right. Hey, Ken, do you have any comments? I know we didn't deliver the <coughs> simulation that you asked for yet, uh, but we did use the integrated logic analyzer, it sounds like, to solve the problem with reading and writing to the custom IP. Uh, but anyway, any uh, comments or questions from you? Oh, just listening in. OK, thank you so much. All right, and then let's hear from James. Are you low audio or no audio? Okay, still nothing. I don't hear any audio from James. But we'll catch up later because we have to talk about uh, Remote Lab South and grant application there for uh, to the FDA. Oops, I'm muted. Sorry, any last comments or questions uh, before we close? All right, Got thank you, on. everybody. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been working on this uplink, yeah, essentially uh, simulation, but the C++ implementation of it, and starting to get an, an excuse me, a notion of all the tracking loops and things that need to operate. And this is, started a little background process in my brain trying to figure out how this is going to go into hardware for a, a massively multi-channel receiver i would like to have a, a confab with you ken and you michelle uh here on the whiteboard maybe and uh, see if i understand where that's gonna gonna have to go to make sense architecturally okay count us in i see some chat messages yeah james is having trouble with audio but we'll we'll figure it out later i might have to we can shut this one down and start up a new one for him to to talk about the uh, fda grant and any other reports from remote lab south y anything else you want to share about the uplink progress uh, uh, there's been plenty well it's not directly on topic for fpga but might as well share the, some good news well, it's got to be received um, by the FPGA, so. <laughs> that's true. It'll have to be re-implemented by the FPGA. Yes. Um, so I'm working on this opulent voice uh, uplink and down uplink receiver and transmitter. <clears throat> and it's been a conversion process, changing the M17 code into opulent voice code. And of course, that means breaking it and then fixing it. And I'm in the fixing it stage now, mostly. Um, as you, if you have been posting progress reports on the Opulent Voice channel on Slack, but I've got to the point where I can actually go over the air, uh, over a, an RF coaxial cable, um, could be antennas, but cable is a little more reliable. And uh, that brings up a lot of new issues because all of a sudden you're not, you don't have the same clock, you're not in synchronization for free. And so of course there are problems, but, uh, Two different computers one i'm transmitting the other one receiving and this is mostly working now uh, i can hear 
good quality voice with some glitches, which I'm trying to blame on the uh, on the USB audio output side. So I'm going to run a test here uh, shortly on that and see if that's a plausible theory. But this means a lot of mechanism is working. Uh, we're acquiring symbol timing. We're acquiring frame timing successfully uh, with a few missed sync words, which need to be investigated further. Although there's enough state machine mechanism to paper over the missed sync words so they don't cause any problem at this level. But they shouldn't be happening, so we have to find out why. And then the integrating the, the vocoder turned out to be pretty easy. Just find the right APIs to call and call them correctly. <laughs> and perfect or near perfect voice comes out. It's just remarkable. Um, if I play back the original file and the file that's gone through the whole system, side by not not simultaneously, but one after the other, it's it's really hard to tell the difference. If I play them in both ears of my headphones, I can hear which one is has been further processed. And it's worse, but not very much worse. It's really good audio quality. If we can make this work over the air in a real system and with uh, enough robustness to, to be tolerable, then it's going to be a giant step forward in, in, uh, in digital voice for ham radio. Good. Thank you. I'm very much looking forward to it because voice is the product for these sorts of systems, you know, even in a very data centric world, you know, got to treat voice as the product and make it sound as good as it possibly can. So thank you. Really looking forward to demonstrations coming up uh, very soon uh, at DEF CON and, <laughs> and also at QSO today, Ham Expo in September uh, throughout the fall, actually. That's, that's our, we have some of our best opportunities to, to do demos. Um, and I think once people hear it, and get to play with it if we can pull pull this off on a hack rf plus a porta pack so that people can install it themselves and and play around with it locally then it'll get some some good traction so very excited if, if about the anybody quality. wants to hear the audio quality for themselves right now there's samples posted on the on the opulent voice slack channel before and after uh, listen to them and see if you don't agree that it sounds great yeah maybe we should make a, a web page about it and and put that up I think it might be a good idea at this it's point. One of these days. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can add it to the to the current announcement for Opulent Voice on the on our website. Cool. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. We are going to close down the FPGA stand up, and we will uh, move towards the bacteriophage and FDA work. So thank you, everybody, and uh, see you at the whiteboard.